Hi, I'm Catherine Close with Psychometrics at Renaissance. Welcome to Assess Minutes, where we take broad assessment topics and summarize them in minutes because your time is important. Let's talk about norming studies. Norming studies give us norm reference scores, or in general, norms. These include percentile ranks, grade equivalents, and normal curve equivalents that most educators are familiar with. At the end of a STAR assessment, as an example, the only score that you get is a skilled score. Let's say you get a skilled score of 600. If you don't know anything else and that's all you have, your next question might be, is that a good, is that a good um, score or not? And one of the ways to answer that question is to look at your norms. A norm, in, by general definition, is something typical. Just as it is typical for children to enroll in kindergarten when they turn five years old, norms in education tell us something about the typical performance by grade level. So how are norms developed? First, we take a sample of students from across the nation. We take a sample because it's not possible to test every single student in the country. If we could, that would be ideal, but we cannot, so we take a sample. What we should also note is that that sample has to be representative. For example, we don't want all our students in the sample to be from the western uh, part of the country or the southeast or the northeast. We want a good sampling of students from every region and by gender and other important characteristics that we know affect student performance. Once we're satisfied with a sample that is a good representation of all the students, we take their scores and summarize them into statistics by grade level and month of the school year to help us compare students with other like students. So looking at that score will help you interpret it in terms of other students who are also similar to this student. So let's take an example of a fourth grader. This fourth grader has tested in the, in the month of February in fourth grade. Their skilled score, let's say in reading, was 600. We look at our norms table, which would look something like this, and determine that that skilled score of 600 has a percentile rank of 70 and a grade equivalent of 5.3. What does the percentile rank tell you? This student performed better than 70% of the students in fourth grade who test in the month of February. So now you know a little bit more about their performance in relation to other fourth graders. Now, what does the grade equivalent tell you? That tells you that this performance by the fourth grader is typical of a fifth grader in the third month of the school year. It does not tell you that they can do fifth grade work. It tells you their reading achievement is above average for fourth graders who test at, this, at, the, at the time that the student tested in the month of February. With that information, you have given that skilled score some meaning. And to conclude, norming studies give us norm reference scores that allow us to compare students to other similar students. That does not mean we can compare norms across grades because students perform differently based on their grade level. So for the, mini for the norms to be meaningful, you focus on assessing students within grade and then comparing them to other students within grade.